Hi, good evening. I hope you've had a good day. Um, I'm just going to read a story that I wrote uh, the other day, and I just need to go to it so that I can read it. So, it's entitled, If There Was a, Stor a Short Story Written About Your Life, What May It Say? I recently read, with others, the book of Jonah. Jonah, as in Jonah and the Whale, is not cast in the best light, although it makes for a good story. It got me thinking, what would a short story of my life say? And indeed, a short story of your life. The following is my attempt. I encourage you to also make an attempt, and if you do, I'd love to read it. So it takes about four minutes to read. Well, four minutes to read if you're reading it, so I don't know how long it's going to take to speak it. I was born into one side of a divide, the Northern Irish Protestants. Historically, the divide had been created by the rulers of England taking Ireland for itself and treating the inhabitants as trespassers. The English rulers, in an attempt to occupy the land and displace the original inhabitants, transplanted thousands of Scottish and English people to Ireland, most settled in the northern province of Ulster. The Northern Irish Protestants, who largely remained loyal to the United Kingdom, were seen by those who saw themselves as the original inhabitants as the legacy of the English rule. So, on the other side were Irish Catholics. I grew up to believe my people were God's chosen and saw the other side as counterfeit Christianity. True Christianity had been rebirthed in the Protestant Reformation and the Ulster Protestants were the finest examples of that rebirth. I only saw the other side as a threat as many within their group demanded equality and others armed themselves to rid their country once and for all of those who sub subjugated them. Northern Irish Protestants were therefore a legitimate target. I didn't think about how I'd come to live here. I'm actually not here, I'm in England, but here in Northern Ireland. 400 years was a long time ago. What I knew was that this was my land and my accent, which you're hearing, was a product of it. Little had I realised that I was feeling like the native Irish when they were displaced from their lands by the rulers of which I was now something of a legacy. Now, not that I owned land or was wealthy, but nonetheless I was a descendant, I am a descendant of those who had been shipped over 400 years before. The threat became so real that I viewed all the other side as the enemy. It was a war of sorts, largely psychological, but not without bombs and bullets. Any attempt by the other side to usurp my side was met by resistance, and I took my place in my youth in that resistance. I believed that Antichrist forces were attempting to eradicate my people, God's chosen. Although I knew we were not Israel of the Old Testament, it felt like we were, and so those stories of the Old Testament inspired me. I truly believed that I was a follower of Jesus, and if Jesus was alive, he would have been a Northern Irish Protestant standing with us. Somehow, I'd missed something of the message of Jesus, and indeed, if he were alive and a Northern Irish Protestant, I would not have liked his message and probably would have seen him as a betrayer. Along the way, a few of the other side had shown me kindness, but they were, in my mind, exceptions. It wasn't until I began to see that those leading my people did not fully believe what they were saying. I had been prepared to give my life for my people, but then I didn't understand power and the use of it by those in power. I saw that I could allow myself to be used to further a strategy. I wasn't prepared to give my life for another to use and broker in a deal that ensured they retained their power at my and others expense. Somehow I saw through it and it was then the identity that I was born into and lived began to shake. Less sure of who I was meant I was more open and that included to the other. I could not ignore that those who helped me when I needed a place to live were from the other side. They became friends. The dividing line was becoming vague. I could still choose to put myself on my side but I knew that was something of a game. Without knowing it, I had become open in whichever part you do. I heard for the first time the message of Jesus, which was about breaking down dividing walls, 
loving those who persecute you and lifting you to a citizenship of heaven, freeing you from earthly nationalism. It wasn't so easy to stay free as my mind had been conditioned and still operated learned ways. Still does. Could I go beyond those who accepted me and extend the message of reconciliation to those who rejected me? Such was the power of seeing a unity in which hatred and bitterness dissolved that I couldn't help myself. The light that showed another way also showed me the truth of my own life. That I had failed people, that I had caused harm to others, and the same power that saved me could others. I asked myself, having read the story of Jonah, were there any people who I felt less inclined to share? I can see in my journey at one time I did not find it easy to share with those who were of a faith other than Christian, nor did I find it easy to share with those who lived outside the expectations of Christian evangelicalism. Yet knowing I had limited myself as a teen caused me to remain open to what God would do and in time I would see that the love of God was so boundless that I too was boundless, connecting me to all and all to me. The old ways still surface. But those moments, but in those moments, they are a reminder of my need to turn to the love of God, and in doing so, they dissolve. So, just wrap that up. How long was it? I can't even see my timer. Six minutes twenty-nine. Read the book of Jonah. It's only four chapters, I think, uh, in the Old Testament or the Tanakh, if you're Jewish, and you will see that Jonah is not portrayed in the greatest light. I think there's a message for us sir, to look at our lives. What, would, what does our lives say? Take a part of your life that means a lot to you so that other people would know that part. But also challenge yourself to think, who did I not want to speak to? Who did I not want to share a life with? Who do I not want to share a life with? And if you do, I would love to hear from you. And you can send me your story or do it by writing or video or whatever okay best evening to you